Hi, I want to welcome everybody to the 34th Annual Ocean City Tuna Tournament. Uh, my name is Rolf Gadelsky, this is Brian Tinkler, and we want to let you just do, run over the virtual rules and let you know of one change that's occurring, and that is that our dinner on Friday will be moved, I mean, dinner on Thursday during the council meeting is going to be moved to Friday evening. Same times, maybe um, come join us and hang out at the tent and enjoy some food and spirits and check in with all our lovely vendors. Yep, here we are, uh, you know, in 2021, we thought all this virtual stuff was behind us. We were really hoping to have a, an in-person event where we could uh, welcome all the fishermen and their family and friends and uh, get things back to normal. But uh, this tropical event had other plans for us. So uh, we're going to take what we learned in 20 and apply it to 21. And here we are with a, a virtual captain's meeting. Uh, one of our plans for this event was to acknowledge the passing of three legends in our fishing community. Uh, Edward Green, better known as Greeny, Joe Riley, and Frankie Petalina, uh, three legends in the community. They're all gonna be so missed. They were all an integral part of, of the tuna tournament, much of it behind the scenes that nobody got to see, but uh, our thoughts and prayers are with their families. I'm sure they're uh, really struggling with the transition without them in their lives and uh, let their families know we're, we're struggling with it as well. Um, and with that said, we'll, we'll move on uh, with the uh, with the reading of the rules for the for the event, and uh, I know all three of those gentlemen had a huge impact on your life. And they, it was amazing what those guys did. I mean, people don't want to imagine how much setup there is for these events, and every one of those guys had in some way helped. I mean, just for the knowledge background on some of them, or even just the physical setup, yeah. uh, they they both they they backstopped us yeah. everywhere and helping us out getting this event out. Yeah. Every and, year. and each of, each one of them was their own character mm -hmm. that they just don't seem to make characters like that yeah. anymore. Uh, so uh, we're going to move move forward with their spirit with us in a in a positive way and and look forward to the 34th annual event. Uh, we'll run through our sponsor list real quick. Yeah, you know, this weather event impacts our ability to uh, provide exposure to those sponsors and everything. We want to do everything we can. Uh, to uh, give them an opportunity to present their, their goods and services. Uh, Hook Fishing Apparel. Hook is huge in the community. Uh, you know, they're 100% behind the event. They're our title sponsor for the event. Uh, Costa Sunglasses. You know, everybody knows the impact that Costa's had on fishing. Uh, and they've been a long-term sponsor of the event. Twisted T. They came in big. Uh, so yeah, Twisted T. And, and uh, we want everybody to embrace Twisted T. We're going to try to win their photo contest by getting some of their product out there. We encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, another long term sponsor, Carter okay, Caterpillar. And, uh, you know, the Carter group across the street uh, from Sunset there, they've, they've had a huge impact on us. Uh, we want to welcome back the Midshore Electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, second year they've been in the game with us. Uh, Midshore is right here, local West Ocean City. Have all your uh, electronics needs for sales, service, and maintenance of the equipment. Uh, Blue Water Yacht Sales. Right on the corner of the mm -hmm. Ocean City Fishing Center. You can't be more local than that for, for residency. Yeah. And Blue Water is you know, awesome with this event. Long-term sponsor again. Squid Nation Bill. What can we say about Bill? He's uh, always mm -hmm. willing to support the event. And uh, his squid and these, this event go hand in hand together. So uh, you know, I want to thank Squid Nation, Avon Dixon Insurance. Jay does a great job yep. for us. He, I mean, he's always more than competitive than anybody and beats everybody else every time. Yeah. Uh, Intrinsic Yacht and Ship. Intrinsic this mm -hmm. year is going to be our committee boat uh, at the OC Junction buoy. We'll get to that later. But uh, thank you to Chris and his gang for stepping up, taking on that responsibility. Yep and uh, you know, being the committee boat for us. Uh, moving on, Cato Gas and Oil. Cato does an amazing job for us. Uh, there again, it's one of those behind the scene things. Logistics of the, if you guys yeah. can imagine how many boats fish and, and to get us to yeah. be able to supply you with that fuel all at once. Everyone that has a nozzle expects fuel to come out of the other end of it. And yeah, you know, when they, <laughs> if they didn't do their job, that might not happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Park Place Jeweler, another long-term sponsor. Jill does fantastic. Anything yeah. you need, go see her. She's got a couple stores in uh, West Ocean City and one in Ocean City. They do a fantastic yeah. job. Uh, Bait Masters, Bait Masters Ballyhoo, who's, who's uh, you know the number one uh, bait in uh, offshore fishing. Mm -hmm. Bait Masters Ballyhoo, 
uh, Mickey Finn's Bar and Grill. Mickey's doing the food for us. Darren yep. and his gang, they do an amazing okay. job uh, for everything. And then uh, uh, Yeti Products, which Yeti sponsors prizes for us and junior, junior Angler junior Gifts. Junior Anglers, they've come out really strong with them, giving them gifts. It's, it, they're really well represented. And, and finally, a uh, new twist for this year, we have Atlantic Tackle on as a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And they're putting up a $5,000 gift card to the number one tuna just for a registered boat. It's not at an entry level or anything. You register the tournament, go catch the biggest fish, you get a $5,000 gift card. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty uh, awesome. impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Our collections of sponsors, fantastic and amazing. I know it took a few minutes to get through them, but uh, without these folks... The sea Keeper. Sea Keeper's a new year. Yeah, that's they just right. just jumped in and they came out too. Uh, they're doing, they're going to be out walking around... Um, Greeting people too during the tournament too. Yeah, so it's hard to step on a boat without a sea keeper no, on it anymore. anymore. Uh, fantastic, and it's been a real game changer mm -hmm. for the industry. Get some some folks out there fishing that uh, maybe otherwise might not be comfortable doing so. Precisely. And more than anything, which I love to see, it's it's prolonged the fishing career of a lot of folks that are yeah. maybe getting up in their years and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's that's an awesome thing on the sea keeper. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we move on to the to the, the uh, reading of the rules. All right. Now all these are online. You can always review them. Please do. Um, there's there's not we've simplified them a bunch, but please reread them at least once. And uh, here we go. Entry fees one thousand per boat. Added entry levels can be added to an existing entry until eight p.m. That's July eighth. That's that's tonight. Captain's meetings and rule of knowledge. Number two. At least one representative from each boat must view. We are counting on you to do this. The, these rules. Uh, you got to accept responsibility for this just so you know what's going on. Tournament dates are July 9th, 10th, and 11th. Boats may fish only two of the three days of this tournament boat, uh, in the tournament. Okay. Boats yeah, we're, li we're leaving Friday in there. You know, you, this weather event's kind of crazy. We're not sure when it's going to push through, how it's going to push through, what it's going to look like on the backside. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there may be somebody out there that thinks Friday looks good for them. Uh, it's looking more likely that it'll be a two of two, but or two consecutive days for most of the boats. Right. But uh, Friday is an available fish day for the two out of three event. If you end up fit someone fishing Friday, make sure we need lay days. Have to be in person, done by ten, or we consider your boat fishing. Now yep. you can turn these in at the uh, registration right then. If you're already calling Friday, you can even pull it. If you do that, but you got to let us know by 10 a.m. the next following day. Also, if people do fish on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, whichever you choose, you can fun fish. That's you're not restricted in this tournament, you, but you lay day it's key. All right, uh, fishing hours lines in 7 a.m. No lines in the water before at all, hooks or no hooks. Lines out by 3 p.m. All lines absolutely clear of the water. Boats may leave either Ocean City, Maryland, Inlet, Indian River. Or Delaware Inlet, boats cannot leave the sea buoys before 2.30 a.m. And no lines in the water until 7 again. Just reiterating that 7 of it's key. Once a tournament boat wets a fishing line, they have declared themselves fishing one of the eligible two fishing days. If a tournament boat is hooked up at lines out, the team may fight the fish until boated or lost. The vessel must arrive at the scales before they close with their catch for that day to be eligible for scoring. Right. Any team hooked up after lines out should notify another tournament boat or tournament officials. Right, and that arrival uh, at the scales is actually the OC junction buoy, the buoy that separates the mm -hmm. uh, North Channel from the Commercial Harbor Channel. So that's where the committee boat and Transic will be there with their committee boat to verify that you've arrived. Uh, and if you're there at close of scales, you have 30 minutes to get your get your fish to the scale and either get in the queue or get into the scales if the, mm -hmm. you know, if the scales are uh, unoccupied at the moment. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And I'm gonna do that in number five, it, it just go the specifics through it. So I'll read just to make sure I hit all the, hit all the important points. Scales open daily at 4 p.m. Tournament boats are, must arrive at the OC Junction Buoy, the green and red marker at the fork of the Ocean City Inlet by 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Now Sunday is 7 p.m., that's very key. It's seven on Sunday. A committee boat will be patrolling the areas, witness your arrival, and provide uh, directions for the scale. You have 30 minutes from passing the Ocean City Junction buoy to make your fish available for weigh-ins at the scales. That's if you're going back to your home, your home port. So it, at, when we look at the inlet buoy at 8 p.m. on Friday and Saturday and we see we're through our queue and we don't see another boat that's coming in, that's it. That's fine if you cross, but let the committee boat know that you're going to your home port, maybe trucking the fish in or using a smaller boat to arrive in. 
All right, following that tournament, channel is 19. Tournament participants may truck their catches to the scale. Notify a lot attendant that you have a fish to weigh. There'll be an individual at the entrance of the fishing center. They'll direct you where to go. It's just straight down the road, but they'll have a drop-off spot at that point. Put your fish in a cart, and then you can, you can weigh it that way. Make sure you're not parking on the grass. That's an important note. They're towing. It's not our property, and I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that beforehand. Providing the, uh, the number of entrants reached is a suitable level. Tournament directors may elect to open a remote fish scale at Sunset Marina. In yeah, that, we'll post that on the bottom of this video. We're pre-recording this video, so mm -hmm. um, if the entrant levels get high enough, we'll post that, uh, that those remote scales would be open probably just Saturday at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll make that crystal clear on this video uh, through a, a text channel when, when we post it. Got it. When all fish, just reiterating this number six, all fish entered into competition must be presented to weigh in by 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday and Sunday at 7 p.m. on July 11th. Now, again, that's just, you can be in the queue. That's, you don't have to be actually physically weighing, so just check in with the tournament boat. Fish presented at weigh-in must be accompanied by an official catch report. All fish must be weighed by an official weighmaster at designated scales to be eligible. In the event the weight ties in either category, this prize money will be divided equally between the tied participants, regardless of the time of day caught. The weightmaster is the official timekeeper of the tournament. Weight of the fish will be rounded to the nearest full pound, with any amount reaching half pound and up, being rounded upward to the next full pound amount. All boats are allowed one weigh-in opportunity per day. To be eligible for tournament winning, tournament scoring, all fish must be weighed on the day they were caught. Yeah, one thing we can hit on there that uh, creates some confusion sometimes, and it's going to come up later in the rules, but I think it's a good time to hit. If you have a trophy fish to weigh, which would be a single largest tuna or a dolphin or a lady angler fish or a junior angler fish, those fish all need to be weighed at the fishing center. Sunset scales, providing they're open, would only be for stringer fish only. So if you weigh one fish at sunset, it's still just gonna count towards your stringer. That was kind of the spirit of opening that second set of scales was to prevent people from having to sit in line for an extended period to mm -hmm. weigh a couple fish that may not be significant for their day, but might help them in the long run for their second day of fishing, to stringer total or whatever. Um, but any trophy fish, and the weigh in one opportunity means you can't go and weigh it at the tournament scales at sunset and then decide to go weigh it over at the fishing center. Once that fish is weighed at mm -hmm. sunset, it's scored for the day and that's it. And that'll be considered a stringer fish. So we that's get a lot exactly. of questions on that. Yep. Uh, now eligible fish and awards. Eligible species are big eye, yellow fin, blue fin, and long fin. Participants are eligible in two categories but a competing boat can win in only one category for levels D, E, F, I, J, and K. There will be three available category purses, prize monies amounts, in each of the two categories. At least 60% of all entry fees collected will be divided amongst the six prize amount. Each tuna must weigh a minimum of 30 pounds, and a minimum weight of wahoo and dolphin is 20 pounds. And single largest tuna. Each team is permitted to weigh one trophy fish per day, as Brian said. The team selects its single fish to be weighed in the event that a lady or a junior angler fish is to be weighed. The team representative selects their single largest first before being weighed. The, first, the fish selected by the team shall be scored as the boat's single largest for the day, regardless of the weight of the lady and junior. Right, we get questions on that too. And basically, you know, if you have three fish laying on the dock, you need to choose your heaviest single fish for the day and if the junior or lady angler fish are weighed and they happen to be larger that, than, than the fish that you chose, your single fish is still the fish that scored. And the purpose for that is because everybody that's weighing stringer has to do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. They have, to, they have to choose their single largest. And the only reason we weigh those other fish is to score them as a lady or a junior angler. Mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense to everybody, we do get questions on that. But, uh, typically, as we explain it, people people get it and, and they understand uh, why well, it's done that way. The process. Now, yep. a great place time to point out, we put we included rubber bands this year in the bag to, to denote whether it's a junior or a lady to keep it separate so you don't get them all confused. 
There'll be little cards, and you just got to check what you use. And it, it, the cards will be self-explanatory, but that's what they're in for. Yeah, we, and, we took that cue for some of the more experienced mm -hmm. teams. We noticed that they were using rubber bands on them and stuff, different colors. So we sourced multiple color rubber bands, mm -hmm. a simple card with a checkbox, lady or junior angler, uh, write the name on there, check the color of the band, throw the fish in the box, you're done. And it's really just a, a you know, kind of a double check to make sure the right fish is being scored for that lady or junior angler. And especially if they're multiple fish yeah. or multiple on one boat, Very they confusing. keep track of it. And you'll be getting those in your bucket if you tell them that you have a junior or lady angler. If you don't have it in your bucket and you decide to add a junior, you need to see a tournament official in any ways. Right. And then you'll get it at that time. Yeah, those the lady and junior anglers have to be pre-registered as anglers. They're the only ones that have to be pre-registered anglers, but lady and juniors have to be pre-registered to be eligible for those prizes. Correct. All right. Heaviest stringer. Each boat could weigh a stringer of up to five tuna each day. Each tuna is a stringer. Each tuna in the stringer must qualify as a tournament eligible fish by weighing a minimum of 30 pounds. If fish does not meet the minimum weight, another fish may be presented as a consideration. Team single's largest fish can, can be added to the, the stringer weight. A team weighs their single largest tuna and may add up to four more, on, on, four more tuna to arrive at their daily stringer total. Multiple big eye tunas can be added to the stringer weight. Dolphin and Wahoo may not be included in the team's daily stringer. All catches must be iced and maintained properly. No mutilated fish will be scored. Now, um, just to elaborate on that, when a boat rides at the scales, if there are any fish that are in question, we pre-qualify those fish. If you throw five fish on the dock and one of them doesn't qualify, you're welcome to try another fish in your box if you have another one that's, try, that's maybe a potential eligible mm -hmm. fish to, to get to your five. Um, but you know, only only the fish that each weigh a minimum of thirty pounds will be part of that stringer. Uh, weather, captain's choice. Participants enter and participate <laughs> in the Ocean City Tuna Tournament at their own risk and discretion. The responsibility for safety and boat crew and angler lies with the captain of the fishing vessel. Yeah, very relevant uh, on this this event with Again. Uh, you know Friday being a real questionable day. Who knows? Uh, how the storm's gonna be pushed through and what it's gonna look like mm -hmm. behind it. Uh, I've seen a couple of different forecasts. Uh, you know, it's, it's right in there. black and white. Black it's white. Fishing boundary. The boundary limit of the Ocean City Tune Tournament is 100 nautical miles from the Ocean City Sea Buoy. That's the fence. Yep. Boats are not permitted to cross the 100 nautical mile boundary for any reason. Any, any, any straying over the line, playing a fish, it, it's not allowed. It, it's, it's, that's yep. a disqualification. You're in a 100 mile box, that's mm -hmm. it, yep. Tackle and bait. All tackle IGFA rules apply unless stated otherwise. No chumming, no chunking, or wireline allowed. No line rod limit. Spreader bars allowed. Fire and spider lines permitted. No green sticks or danglers allowed. Leader lengths at captain's discretion. No limit to the number of lines or teasers. Downriggers, planers, Z-wings are all allowed. All qualifying fish must be caught aboard a registered boat using conventional techniques limited to a manual rod and reel. Electric reels are not acceptable. Oh, electric reels are acceptable for hookless lines, right. including planers, dredge, and teasers. All right. Uh, the no list. Are all uh, just to very clearly lay them out, these are techniques will not be allowed, and they're grounds for disqualification. No dart gaffs, harpoons, lance gaffs. No live bait. No chumming, chunking. No green sticks to be used in any way. No danglers, no wireline leaders, no kites, no gang hooks, no drones, spotter planes. Um, moving on to 13, anglers can pass the rod. This excludes ladies and junior anglers. Juniors may not pass back and forth, and, or ladies, if once they engage on it. If they want to qualify if for they those want to prizes. If they, if they, they get on a fish that's, that's too true. much for yeah. them and it's a tournament fish, yeah. they're welcome to pass the rod and boat that fish, that's but true. then that would just disqualify them from the... Uh, you know, eligibility of one of those two prizes. Correct. All right, so captains and mates can be anglers as long as they are not paid crew. Anglers cannot be a paid captain or mate. Captain and mates can still hook and hand off, um, but they, they, they cannot be if they're, a paid, if they're a paid. Yeah, and we had questions on this earlier uh, from a young man that, you know, uh, works in the cockpit, washes the boat, you know, works uh, kind of, uh, as a, you know, a, a second or third mate on the boat, 
but he's not an employee of the boat. He's not a, a professional angler or a paid crew member of the boat. He would qualify. Uh, what we're trying to eliminate is people that are employed by the vessel to go fishing. Uh, you know, as a paid captain or mate or or a professional angler, they're sort not Sort of a dream team scenario. Right, right. Oh, also, anglers may fight the fish from a rod holder. That That's come up a couple times. I want to make that very clear. You you can play a fish from the rod holder if need be. Um, also, up to six anglers per boat. Um, in the event of a boat disability, contestants may transfer to a second boat with no fee. Tournament officials must be notified. The original boat number will stay with the contestants on the new boat. Scoring will remain under the original boat's name. If the contestant is entered in a size-specific entry level, the new vessel cannot be larger, cannot be larger than the class the contestant is competing in. The team would have the option to forfeit the size-specific added entry if the appropriate size boat is not available. A contested fish can may be transferred to another boat in the event of disabled boat. If a fish transfer should occur, a representative from the original team should accompany the fish to the scales. Tournament officials or other, another tournament boat should be notified of such a transfer. Uh, tournament channel, number channel 19. The fishing center operates on 71. And if there's an emergency, you can get to us, but maintain 19. They will be passing on all the information tournament-wise, normally 71. Committee boat will be on 19 yeah. as well, right? And 71 uh, is basically just for internal internal issues at the marina. Uh, Bluefin tuna. Here's a go. All boats are fishing recreational, not charter boat, head boat limits, okay? You may keep two school fish, 27 to 47, and one large school class fish, 47 or under 73 inches. No giant bluefin. That's 73 or greater. And again, just reiterate, not charter boats. You cannot board that extra fish right. at all. That's we're 100% recreational regu regulations. Uh, no coaling bluefin. They may be measured by any technique suitable to the crew without causing harm to the fish. The fish if the fish is gaffed or injured while attempting to measure, that fish is declared as a boated fish. 17. A boat may enter as many additional skill levels, added entries as they feel appropriate. Skill level notes daily prizes your day one against others day one. This is your first day fishing against other teams fishing the first day of fishing. In some cases, it will not be the same day. The concept applies to day two as well. There are only, uh, there are only two days for dailies. What that's denoting is, just real simply, if someone was to fish on Friday, and it's great, they are competing against the same person who, for that daily, is competing the same person on Saturday. So because it's your first fish day, that's what it is. It's not the actual day. Added entry levels D, E, and F. Boat sizes are based on the manufacturer's length. Boats may choose to compete in a class larger than their boat, but may only compete in one class. At no time can a boat compete in a class smaller than their boat. Right, and that's like don't don't go breaking a tape measure out on us. Uh, on a you know, 32 regulator that's probably 35 feet overall. If, if the manufacturer is calling it 32, we're gonna class it as a 32. And the same thing goes with anything, no swim platforms, bow pulpits or anything like that. Whatever the manufacturer calls it, that's what we're scoring the boat mm -hmm. as. Yep. Uh, okay, all combo, trophy and stinger, added entries. You can only win in one side of the Calcutta. Levels G and H are exception to this rule. Level G and H are considered standalone added entries and all entry participants in these levels are eligible to win one or both categories. Uh, that That is really explained. If you end up with a single heaviest fish and the single heaviest stringer, you still cannot win in both categories of the added entry levels. Right, and that, that's pretty much in the 50, 30, 20 split mm -hmm. levels. Uh, and then if you're in the pro jackpot level, stringer or, or single fish, then you, you, know, you are eligible to win both sides of that, so. Um, Polygraph, we got uh, Monday you know, morning. Yeah, your, your two uh, big money winners will be asked to come in and uh, take a polygraph mm -hmm. on Monday morning. Um, I think that's about it, really. If we're uh, protest, just to go in there. If, yeah. if anybody belongs to protest, it must be on the day of the incident by 7 p.m., turned in with $1,000 deposit, which will be refunded upon. Um, if it's upheld. If it's right. upheld. Um, but it needs to be the day of the incident by 7 p.m. Right. Good luck to everybody in the 34th Annual Tournament. We're super excited uh, to be hosting the event this year, working around the weather issue a little bit, but it uh, looks like we're going to be able to sneak it in, get good participation.
participation for the year. Uh, our staff is super amped up about it. Mm -hmm. This is a highlight for the property for the summer and in many ways a kickoff to the, to the big money tournament mm -hmm. season for, for our area. And just remember, come by Friday night. We're going to be having dinner in the tent, and it'll be a great time. Right. That's it. Tight lines. Thank you, guys.